Thank you and welcome to the English news of Bình Phước Radio Television Station and newspaper. Abu Thủy and following are the headlines as usual. Party official working visit to U.S. Enduring regulation for exporting goods. Ethnic households benefit from program 134. Vietnam served nearly 10 million international travelers in seven months. And now is details. A recent online conference titled Enhancing Compliance with Sanitary and Phytosanitary Regulation in the EVFTA and RCEP Agreement and Implementation Solution provided valuable information for businesses, cooperatives, and farmers involved in the agricultural and food processing sector. The event, organized by Vietnam's Sanitary and Phytosanitary Office under the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development in cooperation with various units, aimed to raise awareness and compliance with export market regulations. The European Union, Vietnam Free Trade Agreement, EVFTA, and the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCEP, agreements involving ASEAN and countries like China, the Republic of Korea, Japan, Australia and New Zealand have opened significant opportunities for Vietnam's import-export market by integrating it into a global value chain. These agreements offer tax incentives, facilitate market expansion and enable participation in global production networks. During the conference, organizers discussed food safety measures, animal quarantine, quality management for seafood exports to the EU and RCEP markets, and the precautions necessary for agricultural exports. The event also covered technologies for preliminary processing and preserving agricultural products to meet export market requirements, as well as solutions to issue food safety and animal disease control in the trade and agricultural and food products. Continues in Bình Phước province on August the 1st and the 2nd, the People's Committee of Folding District, in collaboration with Fulton Rubber Construction Investment John Stock Company and the Commune of Long Ha, Phước Tân and Folding, organized the distribution of profit share and signed John's Venture Agreement for Rubber Plantation Land with households benefiting from Program 134. Furyang District has allocated over 123 hectares of production land to 158 ethnic households under Program 134. Since the project's inception, these households have collectively received nearly 98 billion Vietnam dong in profits. The profit distribution was conducted in the presence of Furyang District officials, representatives from Futing Rubber Company, and local authorities. Additionally, the households voluntarily agreed to extend their joint venture contracts with Fu Ting Rubber Company until 2032. Also on the local front, the emergence of women-led cooperatives in rural areas is providing new economic opportunities for women, reinforcing their role in economic development. Particularly in the collective economy, this initiative also encourages cooperation, entrepreneurship and creativity among women's members. In 2023, women's unions at all levels across Bingfuk province supported the establishment of five new women-managed cooperatives. While the number is too modest, it marks a significant first step towards implementing government policies that empower women to overcome challenges in production and development in 2024 and the following years. In line with the government's project supporting cooperatives managed by women to create jobs for female workers by 2030, Bingfuk Province aims to strengthen and improve the quality and effectiveness of at least 20 cooperatives by 2025 and support the establishment of 50 women-led cooperative groups. The provincial authorities have also provided advice for creating these new women-managed cooperatives with the goal of generating jobs for 90 female workers. Continuous let's take a look what's going on around the country. Politburo member director of the Ho Chi Minh National Academy of Politics and chairman of the Central Theory Council. Nguyen Son Tang paid a working visit to the U.S. from July 31st to August 4th. While in the U.S., 
the party official met with Deputy Secretary of State, Kurt Campbell, Senior Advisor to the U.S. President for International Climate Policy, John Podesta, Deputy National Security Advisor for Cyber and Emerging Technology, and Newberger, and U.S. Department of Treasury Deputy Assistant Secretary for Asia and the Pacific, Robert Caprote. The Vietnamese official also had discussions with researchers and scholars and met the staff of the Vietnamese embassy in the country. He highlighted the comprehensive, rapid developments of the Vietnam-U.S. relationship regarding the U.S. Department of Commerce's announcement that it has not yet recognized Vietnam as a market economy. He said Vietnam has met all the six criteria set by the DOC when considering the graduation to a market economy, suggesting the two sides continue enhancing exchanges. The U.S. should make objective evaluations towards recognizing Vietnam as a market economy, he said. The U.S. representatives shared Vietnam's concern over the DOC's decision and affirmed that this will not affect the thriving economic ties between the two countries. We have more news coming up next. Let's take a look. International media have prominently reported on President to Lum's election as party general secretary. Major Lao publications like Pasaxon and the National Radio of Laos published the congratulatory message from the Lao People's Revolutionary Party's General Secretary. To Lam, a Politburo member and President of Vietnam, was elected as the General Secretary of the 13th Central Committee of the Communist Party of Vietnam on August 3rd. Leading Chinese news agencies, including Xinhua, CCTV, and the People's Daily, highlighted the unanimous vote and the congratulatory message from Chinese President Xi Jinping. Additionally, various international news agencies reported on to Lum's remarks at the press conference after the 13th Central Committee meeting, emphasizing the ongoing efforts to combat corruption and negative phenomena. Foreign investor resisted to put in more than 18 billion USD in Vietnam as of July 20, a rise of over 10% over the same period last year, according to the latest update of the Foreign Investment Agency. In January July, new FDI flow totaled 10.7 billion US dollars, up over 35% year on year. Additional capital reached nearly 5 billion US dollars, up over 19% while foreign investment through contributing capital and buying stakes dropped by over 45% to 2.27 billion US dollars. Foreign investors were present in 18 out of 21 economic sectors. The processing and manufacturing industry took the lead, with a total investment of more than 12.6 billion US dollars, or 70% of the total registered FDI, up 16% against the same period last year. Among 91 countries and territories with investment in Vietnam, Singapore is the largest investor, registering to pump nearly 6.52 billion US dollars in Vietnam, up 79%. Kyrgyzstan is a new investor in July with a project worth 5 million US dollars, making it the 34th largest out of 91 countries investing in Vietnam from the beginning of this year. To date, 147 countries and territories have invested in Vietnam. The number of international tourists visiting Vietnam in July reached top 1.15 million, lifting the total in the first seven months to nearly 10 million, expanding by nearly 11% and 51% year-on-year, respectively. With over 7.8 million arrivals, Asia was a key source of tourists for Vietnam in the period. It was followed by Europe, the Americas, Oceania, and Africa. The Republic of Korea and China contributed nearly half of the total number of foreign arrivals to Vietnam, with respective numbers of nearly 2.6 million and 2.1 million. Meanwhile, the European markets also continued to grow well, with a surge of about 47%, including key markets such as the UK, France, Germany, Russia, Italy, Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland. Famous destinations in Vietnam, including Hanoi, Da Nang, Phu Quoc, Ha Long, 
and Nha Trang, continue to be the most attractive destinations for international holidaymakers. The tourism industry has set a target of welcoming 17 to 18 million foreign visitors in 2024, approaching the pre-pandemic record in 2019. That's all for today on the news of Bingfoot Radio Television Station and newspaper. Once again, thanks for watching and goodbye for now.